What's up YouTubers, today you're going to hear firsthand from a mechanic and automotive expert why electric vehicles will not work and why they will never replace the combustion engine vehicle in America. We will also go over everything you need to think about before buying an electric vehicle. Now, first of all, who am I? Well, my name is Evan, but you can just call me Eddie. I'm a third generation mechanic slash problem solver. During the day, people bring me their car problems and I try to figure out what they can do with them. And before I clock in and after I clock out, I'm working on my own projects and making videos for you. Be sure to subscribe to this channel where I'm making either vehicle information videos or working on my own projects where I run into some crazy problems. Now that brings me to my first point about electric cars, solving the problems that they will have. Now every car is going to have problems at some point. It's just what happens when you use something every day, especially when it's left outside also. The difference in a regular combustion engine vehicle and an electric vehicle is the cost of repair. An electric vehicle may have less moving parts than a combustion engine vehicle, but those parts are less readily available, which makes them way more expensive. These vehicles also work by using highly advanced technology, which not a lot of people know how to fix and has a higher cost. You get the picture, right? Repairs to an electric vehicle are very expensive and will most likely be too much for the average American to afford. The EV and Tesla supporters will claim that an electric vehicle doesn't require as much maintenance, and while that may be true in theory, any new technology will have its problems when the public first gets its hands on it and pushes it to the limit. So like I said before, when you use something every day, eventually it will break, and when it does, it would be better if it was affordable to fix and someone can actually do it. The next biggest thing that I see as a problem for electric vehicles is the energy solution. Now, while some people claim that they're more efficient than combustion engine vehicles, this is probably the biggest thing holding EVs back. It's the power required to make them work. And in a combustion engine vehicle, the engine creates all the power necessary to move the vehicle, supply the vehicle with voltage, AC, and power steering. It'll also supply anything else you want to stuff in there. An electric vehicle doesn't have an engine, it has a motor, which doesn't generate any power, it only consumes it. And there lies the problem with electric vehicles. They only consume energy and they do not create it. To store all that energy, a battery is required. These batteries are expensive and contain highly toxic and rare metals. These metals are mined in very poor conditions where workers are exposed to these toxins. But even if you don't care about those people and you only care about protecting the earth, well the earth is severely destroyed when mining these metals as well and it's almost destroyed beyond repair. Now while we're talking about batteries, we might as well talk about charging them. Once these batteries are in your car, they can take a while to charge, and that's because these batteries hold about 400 to 900 volts depending on your vehicle and range. Now transferring and storing all that energy takes time, and the more charged the battery is, the longer it will take to reach full charge. Even the fastest chargers in the world still take about an hour to fully charge an electric vehicle, and the slowest chargers can take days to fully charge an electric vehicle. This is not a problem for daily driving as you can come home and regain your mileage overnight by slow charging your vehicle. But taking long trips over 300 miles are very difficult to make an electric vehicle. Not to mention the charging infrastructure in America is a long way away from being able to supply enough power to provide for millions of electric vehicles. So why are we making the change to electric cars? Because gas is bad, right? Because if we don't, we will all burn or our kids' kids will all burn in fires that we started. So we have to buy an electric vehicle and then we are all good. No more carbon footprint when driving. Well, not so fast. 40% of the electricity in America is generated by burning, you guessed it, coal. Yes, your green Tesla is powered by black coal, especially if you live in my part of the country. It's dirty, it's abundant, it's basically pure carbon, and when burned, it emits far more CO2 than gasoline ever could. But your Tesla is one big old paperweight in my area of the country without it. And now isn't that ironic that two vehicles that could be sitting side by side each other both emit CO2 and one does it at the source and the other does it miles away. Now this is my 1997 Toyota 4Runner and I got the Tesla in the background back there. Now looking at this thing, car essentially does everything I need it to do 
the same way this one does. Now let me explain. I wanted to get up one morning and drive to Texas. Hell, I ain't worried about this thing. This thing will make it to Texas, no problem. The only thing I would be worried about with this thing is this 97. I might have to check the suspension out, check my oil, make sure my motor's good, everything like that. And maybe look it over a couple times before I leave. But other than that, you know, I'd be perfectly fine driving this thing to Texas. Well, in this thing, it's a little bit of a different story. And that's because I have to stop and charge this thing probably at least four or five times to get to Texas. And that's going to take significantly more time to make it. So, yeah, while this car is faster, it's cooler, it's slicker, this car would make it to Texas way quicker than this one would. And the premise for that is my whole premise on why electric cars will not work as a full fleet replacement. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm going to go ahead and figure that you're thinking about buying an electric car. And let me go ahead and tell you what to do. Don't. Now, you don't have to listen to me completely. And if you still want to buy an electric car, my actual recommendation is to go try to buy a Tesla. And the reason for that is Tesla has been around for multiple years and been making electric vehicles for multiple years. So they have a lot of their kinks worked out in their technology. Where these new companies such as GM, Ford, and Nissan, and whoever the hell else is making these dang electric vehicles, they do not have the kinks worked out in these electric vehicles, and this technology is brand new to them. And any time any of those companies have ever released brand new technology in the past, there has always been serious problems with it when it first comes out. So buyer beware on non-Tesla electric vehicles. Just a warning out there. Now, here's some things you should actually think about before buying an electric car. The cost versus the long-term repair cost. Now, electric cars are expensive, and the batteries are really expensive, costing fifteen dollars to $20,000. And these batteries usually only last about 5 to 10 years, depending on usage. And another thing to note is that your car will lose range the older it gets. As these batteries age, they lose the ability to hold as much energy as possible. So the less energy they can hold, the less energy they can provide to the motor, and the less mileage you will have in return. Now thinking about the long-term cost, you can go ahead and add in the cost that you're going to pay originally for the vehicle and the cost for a battery five to ten years down the road, plus any maintenance in between. And yes, electric vehicles, they do require maintenance and changing of their fluids. I would do my research, add all this up, and compare it to combustion engine vehicles, and you may find that you will have a lower cost in the long run with a combustion engine vehicle. Now, charging is another thing you will have to seriously think about because I have seen this already where lines of people are lined up at charging stations because they don't have anywhere else to charge. To prevent this, you could get a charging port pit in your house, but that can also be very expensive. We're talking ten to $20,000 to install some of these charging ports. And I've heard the Volkswagen one can be very expensive to install. And that brings me to my next point, which is not all electric vehicles are the same, and nor are they charged the same, meaning that they have different charge ports for different vehicles. Such as Tesla has a different charge port than a Rivian has, than a Nissan Leaf has. There is a universal port called a J1772, but this is not used on all vehicles. There is adapters available though, so be sure which vehicle you have and see if it has an adapter for it. Overall, I believe electric vehicles will be a part of our future, but I do not believe they will be as popular as a combustion engine vehicle is today. Electric vehicles will be a luxury that only certain people can afford, and they will be like that until there is better battery technology that is sufficient enough to travel a long distance or affordable enough to repair or replace. The way these batteries are designed currently pits a ceiling on the amount of energy we can pit in them and how fast we can pit that energy in. And I haven't even spoken in depth about the lack of electrical infrastructure in the world to power millions of electrical vehicles. We have a long way to go before electric vehicles are truly non-harmful to our planet. And remember, the only thing wrong with a combustion engine vehicle is the gasoline being pit in it. 
We also have flex fuel vehicles that use E85, which burns much cleaner than traditional gasoline. And my point is, is if we have a clean burning fuel that is compatible in our combustion engine vehicles, there's not even a need to make an electric vehicle. These fuels are already being made and tested, as is better battery technology. And I believe our future is a future of choice, where we will have plenty of vehicles to choose from, including electric, hydrogen, and combustion engine vehicles. And we may even come up with something else. But for now, we're stuck with combustion engine vehicles because they're the most affordable and the most economical to fix. And I have plenty of projects to fix as well. So if you don't want to miss any of those, be sure to subscribe to this channel and go follow me on Instagram and Facebook. As always, thank you for watching and whatever you're doing, however you're doing it, make sure you stay dirty and you can just call me Eddie.